Hello, I am Dr. Ebenezer Ankara, and I will be taking you through this introductory course in computing, INFS 214, Introduction to Computing. Introduction to Computing introduces students to a general computing concept. And of course, these are just the fundamentals of computing. This course is divided into 13 sessions. And we'll look at the first session, which is the history of computing. Computer systems play a critical role in all aspects of life. Computer systems have made a very vital impact on society. The use of computer technology has affected every field of life. In fact, this session seeks to introduce students to the history of computing. At the end of this section, a student will be able to give a brief history and account of computing. We also, the student will be able to identify the various generations and the corresponding major developments. Students will also be able to differentiate between the generations and understand the future of computing. The history of computing. The history of computing cannot be complete without the mention of Charles Babbage. And he started in the 20th and the 20th century by introducing what we call calculations using machines. Before the 20th century, most calculations were done by humans. Early me mechanical tools to help humans with digital calculation were called computing machines or better still, called calculators. These machines were being operated and were also mechanical. They didn't have any flexibility. Till further in the early 21st century, when Charles introduced the technology called the computing. A series of breakthroughs, such as transistors, computer integrated circuits, and digital computers, in fact, came to replace the analog systems that were used. And those systems were just analog, they were not continuous and very difficult to operate. Data were entered and the series of instructions were also coded without any flexibility. Now we can talk about five main generations of computer systems. And in other texts, they only make emphasis place emphasis on only four generations. The history of computers has been categorized under four generations. Of course, some may also use five with respect to the development in the overall period of time. The first generation computers has a span from 1950 to 1957. And these computers were very huge and relied on what we call vacuum pumps. Their size were very big and can occupy more than 12 by 12 or 20 by 20 size of a room. Their size were very huge. And the first company to use is what we call the electric engineers. They, used, they were the first to use this type of computer. And of course, they were very huge but could not store a lot of data. And at that time, within the 1950 to 57, they were very expensive and could not be afforded by any other organization. The second generation computers also came in from the 1957 to the 1963. And they, instead of the vacuum pumps, were using what we call transistors. And with these transistors, reduces the size of these computers. In the 60s, 4 to 1970, the third generation also came in. And with the third generation, they did not use the vacuum pump, they did not use translators, but they used integrated circuits. And by the circuits being embedded on the motherboard, reduces the, the system further to a very smaller size. In the 1970s to 1980 was the dispensation of the fourth generation computers and they rely on the very, what we call, large integrated circuits. And this further reduces the size of the computer. 
and of course gives the computers the ability to process and store more data and so you realize that as the days goes by the size are becoming smaller but the capacity and the speed increases the first generation which is the dispensation that we are in now we started from 1991 to the current dispensation uses what we call very integrated circuits and of course they have different characteristics in terms of storage in terms of speed in terms of size and the price is relatively lower and cheaper than before so these are the main five generations of computers that we have gone through now about the future of computer systems clearly recent technological changes and those to come in future will produce significant changes and career opportunity to the society in the years ahead we cannot underrate the power of computer systems and the future that it holds for all of us in the near future we are looking at a very sophisticated software for personal teaching and medical care in most hospitals now you don't need to go there or pick your folder from one desk to the other everything is electronic in nature a lecturer can also disseminate and also lecture a wide range of audience through technology and this is what the future of technology holds for us recently there was an x-ray exhibition where the x-ray films were being sent online so right from the x-ray outlet the report is sent to the doctor in charge and the doctor will prescribe and analyze whatever the outcome may be access to library materials via computers will be more convenient and less expensive than going to libraries most of us rely on electronic materials some in fact i believe most of you it's been a while since you visited any library because you can access the electronic resources from wherever you are irrespective of your age location and of course level and this is what the future holds for us in terms of technology teleconferencing and internet will replace business travels i know some of the medical students or some of the nursing students have started using the teleconferencing system where a lecturer will be positioned at one station and then all the other centers will be connected to this lecturer's portal and then the lecturer will deliver and this is technology and this is what the future of computer science holds for us you don't need to travel from eastern western or even the north to come to main campus for lectures because of teleconferencing we are also talking about the public and private networks that will be common in society and you'll be able to assess and send voice and data transmission irrespective of where you are most employers will require computer technology literacy and this is very important to stress that if you are not technologically inclined you need to sharpen your skills because this is what will give you competitive advantage when you go out there in the market because employers will be asking for your level of computer skills and so let's take this computer course very seriously so that when we go out there we will not be found wanting and this is where i'll bring the first session of the history of computer systems and the future of computer systems we will continue shortly with the second session.